Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of The Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. My name's Chris Coney, I'm the host of Cryptoverse and the founder of Cryptoversity.com, the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. You can find out more and subscribe at Cryptoversity.com. So today we turn once again to Bitcoin.com for the news. In this article from Trevor Hill, says the world's largest or the sixth largest Bitcoin mining pool tests out Bitcoin Unlimited. So this is the world's sixth largest mining pool testing out an alternative uh, Bitcoin client to or an alternative to Bitcoin Core. And this is a big deal. So let's look at this. Chinese mining pool via BTC has made the decision to test Bitcoin Unlimited. This is a significant move on the part of the pool's managers as it could have implications for the Bitcoin block size debate going forward. And for those of you that don't know, this is one of the ways that we could solve the Bitcoin block size debate is by the miners installing an alternative version of the Bitcoin software that supports bigger blocks. Bitcoin Core has stayed steadfast to one gigabyte blocks, so one megabyte blocks rather, and then Bitcoin Unlimited, Bitcoin Classic, and so others. other alternatives have been advocated for bigger blocks and if enough people installed these alternatives, we would go up in block size. So via BTC says we are supporting big blocks. Via BTC also happens to be the sixth largest mining pool in the world, making the decision even more impactful. The mining pool is fairly new, having apparently been founded only within the last two months. Despite its youth, via BTC has rapidly grown to obtain its position as one of the biggest Bitcoin mining pools in the world. It seems that most of its growth has come from within the last few months. In fact, according to a Reddit post last month, the, po the pool saw an increase in size from 3% to 10% of the total hash rate, which is the amount of Bitcoin mining power on the network, in just 24 hours. So in 24 hours, they went from accounting for 3% of the total processing power to 10%. In a 24-hour period, that's pretty significant. So at press time, the pool has a maximum hash rate of 120 petahashes per second. So via P BTC is in favor of big blocks as well, having publicly come out in support of increasing Bitcoin's maximum block size on Twitter. However, while the mining pool has offered their support to bigger blocks, they are still running and primarily mining on the Bitcoin Core client. So that's an important distinction. They're not officially running um, Bitcoin Unlimited. They are just testing out to um, uh, on the Bitcoin testnet, I assume, or running it on their hardware, but we're not privy to the details of how they are testing it. But the vast majority of their real hash power is being pointed towards Bitcoin Core. So good times ahead for Bitcoin Unlimited. This move by the mining pool shouldn't be misconstrued as voting for any client other than Core, however. Nonetheless, the via BTC's trial run of Bitcoin Unlimited and support for bigger blocks seems to be good news for the alternative client. Oh yes. This development follows more good news as Bitcoin Unlimited recently received a $500,000 donation. The donation led the project's team to formally register as a non-profit organization. Now to my mind, that's a good move. The question of what Bitcoin's block size should be has been one of the most polarizing areas of debate within the community. While the community has historically kept it safe and stayed with the one megabyte limit, the consensus has been threatened in recent months as more people come out in favor of larger blocks. The debate over Bitcoin's block size has become increasingly heated since 2014, with many seeing its resolution as an essential to Bitcoin's survival. Uh, survival? Maybe. Growth, definitely. Survival, maybe. Big block supporters argue that the current one megabyte limit on the block size will restrict Bitcoin's scalability, leading the network to break down as demand for transactions grows. The small block camp, on the other hand, worry that an increase in block size will lead to centralization, making Bitcoin less secure. For more information on the block size debate, what it does, and what its scalability means for Bitcoin's future, read this article, which is another Bitcoin.com article, which I'll put in the show notes. So via BTC's decision to test Bitcoin Unlimited as a possible scalability solution marks another addition to the growing list of influential forces in the Bitcoin community supporting big blocks. 
What do you think of ViaBTC's decision to experiment with Bitcoin Unlimited? What will it mean for the block size debate? And then you can comment on the article below. Hmm. Well, what do I think? Check this out. It occurred to me this morning when thinking about this Bitcoin block size debate. And what, how it's often spoken about is, okay, Bitcoin Core supports one megabyte blocks. And then the alternatives are saying things like, should we move to two, sorry, one megabyte blocks? Should we move to two megabyte blocks or maybe three, four megabyte blocks or eight megabyte blocks? Now, the assumption there is that we have to increase in increments of megabytes. And that's an assumption that I made up until this morning when I was like, hang on a minute. Why are we thinking in one in one megabyte jumps? That's stupid, right? Unless I'm completely technically inept, I believe that you could do it gradually. So why don't we increase the block size limit to say 1.1 megabytes, right? And that would be a tiny in improvement. It would increase capacity on the network. Capacity we don't strictly need on a day-to-day -day basis. We only need the extra block size, you know, when we have a particular busy day on the Bitcoin network. But let's say we increase it to 1.1 megabytes. That would then allow, um, is, let's say that's the wrong decision and bigger blocks cause problems. Well, they'd only cause a small problem and we'd be able to see it and nip it in the bud, wouldn't we? Because we've only increased the block size by 100 kilobytes. So then you'd be able to see gradually any problems emerging without it becoming catastrophic. A jump from one megabyte to eight megabyte blocks or one megabyte to two megabytes, of course, is a big risk because you are doubling the block size. So why, why take such a big jump? Why not scale it slowly? Why not change it to 1.1 megabyte blocks, right? So if you're a scientist, you do experiments and you make decisions based on real world data. The trouble is, um, we've never actually tried it. So rather than saying, having to make a decision between option A, staying with one megabyte blocks, and option B, going to two megabyte blocks, well, why not use, you know, principle, I think it's the fourth principle from the, from the seven habits. Think win-win, right? Why not find a middle ground? You don't have to go this way or that way. Just increase it a little bit and then see what happens, right? If it works, then we can increase it by another 100 kilobytes to 1.2 megabytes and then another, right? And then anyone who says bigger blocks are going to cause problems, they don't actually have an argument anymore because you can say, well, we increased it by 100 kilobytes. It worked and there was no adverse effects whatsoever. So let's crank it up another 100 kilobytes. And that would end the debate, right? A debate <laughs> can only continue if you have a lack of data. So why not get some data? Now, I think that, I don't know if anyone's ever come up with that before, but it was just an assumption that I was making that we had to jump from one megabyte to two megabytes. And then I realized that's absolutely, that's absolute rubbish. We don't have to do that at all. We could just do it slowly, test it out on a small scale. And then if there was a problem, we could just scale it back. So that's my insight for the day. And that's the end of the Cryptoverse for today with me, Chris Coney. Thank you very much for listening. Please go to cryptoversity.com, subscribe to the Cryptoverse podcast on whatever your favorite platform is. Please send us a Bitcoin tip if you in enjoyed this episode. And please click through to Steam it and vote for this episode on the Steam network. If you would like to learn some more structured information on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains, check out the courses section on cryptoversity.com. That's all for today, guys. So I will see you tomorrow for the next episode of Cryptoverse. Until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.